In the past couple of tutorials, we've talked a bit about how to query data from a GraphQL server using, well, queries. That's super useful, but obviously there's more to data management than just receiving. We need to be able to send data to our backend and update the database with it. To do that in GraphQL, we use what they call mutations. We're going to be building on the same Node.js application that we already created in the previous couple of tutorials, so make sure that you have that available before moving forward. If you need to start at the beginning, just head for JS Quick Hits 48 in Introduction to GraphQL and go from there. Also remember that you can always check out working code for each tutorial at the JS Quick Hits GitHub repo. For example, your index.js file to start with should look like this. All that stuff. All set? Let's roll. The first thing we need to do is update our schema with two items. The first is an input type, which we'll use to describe the data we'll be sending in from the front end. It goes up at the top of the schema, above the user type, and it looks like this. Note that there's no ID field here. This is because in the real world, you don't want to generate an ID on the front end. Your database would do that for you. We're going to fake it in our backend code. More on that in a second. First, we need to add at the bottom of the schema our actual mutation. It looks like this. Pretty simple, right? We reference a create user resolver that we'll create in a second, tell it to expect input from the front end, tell it that the input will match the user input schema we just created, and then tell it that it should return a user object, which we defined in a previous tutorial. Now let's create that resolver. Down in the root block, at the top, add this code. OK, here's the situation. When we get stuff from the front end, the data we define is going to come in as a sub-object called input from the top level args object. We destructure the name and age from that. Then we generate our ID. Remember, we're simulating adding to a DB here. Then we push the data to our quote unquote database, aka our array, and then we return the new user. We're done here. Save the file, and let's head over to our handy GraphQL GUI. Well, I ran into a problem here because I forgot this comma. So add that comma, then save again. Hopefully this time you'll have an actual running GraphQL server. Let's take a look at that. That looks a little better. To use our new mutation, we just need the following code. What we're doing here is saying, hey, we're using a mutation, and then which mutation we want to use, the input we want to give, and of course, which parts of the user object we want to get back. Remember, that's one of the coolest things about GraphQL, the ability to pick and choose what data we receive. So in this case, we're getting all of the available bits of data, ID, age, and name in that order. But we could just as easily ask for the name back, or the ID, or whatever. Go ahead and run that. There we go. You should see that you've successfully added a user to the database, quote unquote. You could keep changing the data and rerunning the query as long as you don't refresh the page. You'll see the ID increase with each new user you add. For example, there we go. You could also query all those users, but again, don't refresh or you'll lose everything that's not defined in the initial array. This problem is, of course, why we use databases in the real world. That's it for basic GraphQL. There's obviously a ton more we could dive into, but the goal of this series isn't to go into that depth. If you'd like me to do a full GraphQL course, let me know and I'll add it to the list. Next week, we're going to take a look at the latest version of Express.js and Express Generator. See you then.